All right, and I will move on to introducing our uh, instru instructors for today's class. We have Matt Wagner. He is the implementation engineer here at Novarad. Matt has been with Novarad for the last 11 years. He began working in support as a technical support engineer and then moved on to implementation. In his spare time, he likes to spend time with his son and challenge himself with a variety of video games. Next, we have Matt Asquith. Matt Asquith has been with Novarad for six years. He recently moved to the implementation team from the support department. He recently watched Oppenheimer and the Barbie movie and highly recommends them both. He enjoys good food and expressing strong opinions on proper Southern style of barbecue. Jennifer Deal, Manager Clinician Solutions Fluency Direct um, at 3M, um, so M Modal Health Information Systems. Jennifer Deal has worked with M Modal for 22 years in various roles. For the past seven years, she has worked with Fluency Direct as an adoption specialist supporting ambulatory site support and training so providers can benefit from faster documentation times. We also have here uh, Stephanie Volosik. Um, she is the solution advisor at M Modal. And Stephanie has been with Emodal since November 2021. With over 15 years of experience in imaging, she has extensive knowledge of radi radiology workflow. She is passionate about optimizing the functionality of Fluency Direct for the end users. In her free time, she enjoys time with her family, camping, fishing, and relaxing by the pool. Just for the last reminder, Again, you can send questions to user group questions at novarad.net and all emails will be addressed within a week, two weeks, but we get to those pretty quickly. So I will now turn the time over to the Matt. Good, af good afternoon, everyone. I just want to do a quick introduction of um, Fluency Direct and a little bit about Fluency Direct. So Fluency Direct is a solution for preformed dictations of medical reports into Windows and web based. Um, electronic medical records um, and into the, the Novarag Diagnostic Viewer. Emodal's cloud-based profile architecture allows uh, deployments via browser-based thin clients or native applications processing speech locally or server-side depending on the requirements and resource availability. In addition, resources such as vocabularies and user profiles are managed and updated centrally, allowing access from multiple clients and locations without the problems associated with developing and managing roaming profiles. Every um, Fluency Direct login is associated with a personal voice profile that is regularly improving behind the scenes as the user continues to use Fluency Direct and follow the best practices. Uh, because of this, no one else should be dictating under another user's login. Um, what we mean by behind the scenes uh, means that um, the users don't have to do anything explicitly to train the system. It just passively um, goes through the, the regular learning process as the users dictate. The voice profile and their options, self-made commands, dictionary items, and other things are all synced up to the cloud. Um, and that is located at the Emodal data center. This allows users to move to any workstation and have the most up-to-date profile ready. Fluency Direct can be used anywhere they can type, but it is des designed for medical dictation. Uh, I'm gonna turn the time over to Matt Asquith here for a little bit, and he's gonna go through uh, some of the basics. Hey everyone, this is Matt Asquith. Go ahead and share my screen real quick. So uh, hopefully that's visible for everyone. Uh, Currently, I have opened the Diagnostic Viewer, and what we're going to start out with is I'm going to show you how to set the plugin to Fluency in our product. Um, this should be the first step for any user that is transitioning over to Fluency Direct. Uh, it's a one-time setting, but it is a per-user setting. So um, when you have a radiologist user, a cardiologist user, or a mammographer, anyone who's going to be uh, dictating reports, they're going to have an option show up. Um, you can see under current user information, I'm currently on a user that has been configured as both an administrator and a radiologist. Now that's important because it's going to allow us to see the option to switch to Fluency Direct. So 
if we click here on settings options you'll see the options window and here across the top there's several tabs uh, the second from right is plugins and that's where we're going to go click plugins and you'll see here the second option dictation provider it's currently set to basic so uh, oftentimes if you have a user who is uh, attempting to dictate a study they'll see a dictation window that looks something like this that means they are not configured currently for fluency direct and you need to take the following steps so we'll go ahead and cancel out of this if i click settings options as i showed you before plugins and i change basic to fluency direct that's all that needs to be done in our viewer to configure it to set up uh, dictation for fluency direct that integration so if you click ok and I open up that same study again. And I attempt to dictate. You'll see I now have the dictation window. Now in this dictation window, I can dictate regularly, just like I've done before with Dragon or with uh, you know, other dictation providers that you, you may have been configured with before. So that is setting up the plugin to Fluency Direct. Now, um, you'll see across the top, I do currently have Dragon open. That's what's going to be very popular for a lot of the uh, people who are switching over to Fluency Direct. You're probably coming from Dragon. You'll see down here this discrete button. This is actually Fluency Direct. Now, I'm going to switch screens real quick to one that has my microphone plugged into it. And here you'll see that same pill. So this is this is uh, Fluency Direct. This um, interface here we refer to it as the pill and, and we'll refer to it as that throughout the remainder of the meeting um, currently i am logged in so i'm going to log out and i'm going to kind of show you what this interface looks like the first time you log in so uh, primarily you're going to be receiving an install file that is pre-configured to connect to your uh, your novarad accounts when you get the installer from us um, if you hold shift and click on the uh, the pill, you'll see that there's an advanced tab. Now this advanced tab is something that you should never have to configure, but it is something that you can see here. It has been pre-configured when I installed this with the Novarad locations that allows me to be able to authenticate against the Novarad uh, username that I have configured for myself. So what most of your users should be experiencing is uh, they'll, they'll launch Fluency Direct. It will say, please sign in, and you just click on it, and you're going to put in your credentials. And you'll see I'm now logged in. Now, this pill, you can dock it in several locations. Um, I would probably recommend something like in one of the corners or along one of the edges. But for today, I'm going to keep this nice and central just to make it easier to see. So. Uh, logging in should be straightforward. If you do have any uh, issues with that, you can always reach out to our support department if you're having issues. Um, you can reach out to Matt Wagner or myself, and we should be able to get you authenticated into the system. But once you are configured or once you are authenticated, um, one of the main things you're going to want to uh, make sure is set up before your users begin attempting to dictate uh, is making sure that your microphone has been set up appropriately. So here you'll see if you if you click on the pill, uh, left or right click, it will open up this menu. Now in this menu, we're going to go to microphone setup first. And you'll see up here at the top, microphone, very straightforward. There's a drop down and this is going to see all of the microphones that we have associated uh, or that we have available on this machine. You'll also see down at the bottom that you can link a mobile device. If you do have a user that wants to use their mobile device as a microphone, they can download the 3M mobile microphone app, put in the code when it prompts you for it, and it will allow them to use that cell phone as a microphone. But for now, I'm going to leave it on the microphone I'm currently speaking to you on. Now, also, you'll see that you have a default record button. This is going to be the uh, accent or tilde key under escape. And that can be reconfigured and it's also probably not necessary to reconfigure for a lot of the users uh, kind of depending on how they're going to uh, 
utilize their dictation microphones. Um, I will go ahead and, and click on the advanced button. You'll see you can have uh, both of these should be able to be modified by users if needed um, in order to change that hotkey if, if necessary. Now, uh, once your microphone has been set, uh, and, and most of the time it is going to be something like a power mic or a speech mic, um, you may want to calibrate that microphone. And what calibration is going to do, it's going to uh, it's going to tune the specific interface, the microphone that you have to the user's voice. And I say that because there is also a profile training, which I'll go over in a moment, um, that is going to be very similar for your users. But anytime that you switch microphones, I would definitely recommend running the microphone calibration. And I'll do that real quickly just to show you what that looks like. So I've opened this up and you'll see it says press the accent key on your keyboard and dictate this text. And uh, we'll, I'll just read it till the OK goes blue. I'm speaking into the microphone. I am keeping the microphone at the side of my mouth so that I don't breathe directly into it. I am speaking in a natural voice as if I'm talking to a friend. While I read this paragraph, my profile is being adjusted for better speech recognition. And you'll see, etc. it goes on. Um, but by finishing that, it's going to uh, tell Fluency Direct uh, a little bit about the room that you're in, the microphone that you're using, and your voice so that it can uh, properly calibrate itself to, to be able to understand you more clearly. Now, as I mentioned before, there is also profile training as well. Uh, and this will be especially helpful for anyone that has a radiologist uh, that has an accent or uh, maybe speaks quietly. Um, training the the profile is going to allow uh, Fluency Direct to really dial in on an individual user's speaking pattern. So uh, it's very similar to the calibration, but what I find helpful about the profile training is that it also has the prompt. Um, but, well, I'll, I'll even show you the prompt itself is in fact kind of helpful hints and tips for users to use so they can get more familiar with Fluency Direct. But it's going to work pretty similar to uh, the, the calibration. So uh, now that I have it green, I would say Fluency Direct also supports commands for text cor correction. Saying correct selection after the text has been highlighted will bring up a list of alternatives. And you'll see that it is understanding when I'm reading along and when I'm not reading. That just shows you that it is in fact uh, kind of understanding what you're saying and, and helping itself uh, learn your speech patterns a little bit more accurately. And there's several tips that it goes through. And uh, by the time you get to the end, it should have a pretty good understanding of the user that it's dealing with. So let's see here. Now, um, real quickly, I'd like to switch over to the uh, the command section. Um, the command section is going to be something that's very important to your uh, your users. Uh, obviously, this is going to be probably the biggest time saver that you can provide to a doctor is uh, you know a good understanding of how to utilize commands um, or macros. And so you can always come in and uh, you know manually create a macro, but a lot of times your doctors have macros that they've been using that they're very comfortable with, and they're going to want to uh, export or import those. So I have already uh, kind of taken the time to export a, a, a couple of examples of these macros. Um, but one thing that I did want to mention is, especially if you have users that are coming from Dragon, now it's it's not going to let me do this right now because I'm on a VM, but uh, it, when you go to export using the command browser in Dragon, it's going to generate a file. By default, it's going to correct or it's going to uh, generate a .dat file, my commands .dat. You don't want to use that with Fluency Direct. It's it's not going to work. But what Dragon does do is it gives you the option to export as an XML. If you export as an XML from Dragon, you can then come in and import an XML style document into your Fluency Direct commands. And it should work uh, pretty much one to one. 
So uh, here I have an F, a .fdc file. This is a Fluency Direct exported macro. And just to kind of show you how this works, if, if anywhere in these groups, if I right click and go to import, I can click on this macro x-ray chest normal, click OK, there's my macro. And so now anytime I say macro x-ray chest normal or whatever it is that you want to, to call it, it's going to inject the text. And it's, you know, I, I've just put something silly here for now, but um, this is how your users are really going to be able to uh, fine tune how long they're spending per study. Um, they're going to be able to save a lot of time. Now, if your users are uh, kind of friendly with each other, especially if you have multiple radiologists, uh, a lot of times if you get one radiologist that has a lot of macros that your other radiologists find useful, you can come in and you can export these either individually or if I have multiple commands, I can export from here all the commands in the group simultaneously into a single file. Now, uh, this is one that I did, I, that I had actually just grabbed from Fluency's website where I had pulled in a bunch of dragon commands. I imported all of these from a single file. And again, all you have to do to import those is either import the group here, or if I want to go ahead and inject a specific command into a specific command group, I can do that here. And the the differences between these groups is that I can uh, I can share or export one group uh, with other users while keeping personal commands uh, organized here. Um, it, it really is just kind of endless options for customizability and for sharing. So. Uh, and that's that's pretty much it for importing and exporting as well. Um, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to Matt Wagner again. He's got a few more things, and then we'll we'll circle back around and try to answer any questions at the end of this. Thank you, Matt. So I'm going to start off by just going over uh, a few of the common voice commands. Um, so I've kind of got a, a little table format here laid out. Um, Delete that and delete selection. Um, they're going to delete the selected words, word or words. Um, undo that will undo the last thing that the, the user has said. Um, correct or correct selection. Um, it'll pull up a selection box, um, will pop up, and it'll give you the uh, Fluency Direct's best guess alternatives, or you can actually type a new term into the dictionary for training. Uh, new line moves uh, your cursor down one line. New paragraph will move your cursor down two lines. Uh, select will select a specific text. So you can um, use some other indicators such as select a word, select a phrase, or select a sentence. So you could say um, select report, and it would select the word report and so on and so forth. You can also say select all, and it will select all of the text. And as um, Matt just got done talking about the creating a command or a template, um, you can use the save this text command um, that will bring up a selection box where the user can add a new text snippet for a command. Your next and previous fields, will move your cursors um, to the next or previous fields within the line. Um, the remove all fields, it removes if your user has um, <clears throat> the bracketed items so they can quickly move through some different fields, it will remove the, the brackets from those areas. Go to end of sentence and go to end of paragraph. We'll move your cursor to either the end of the sentence or the end of the paragraph. Um, insert before text or insert after text um, will bring your cursor to that specific part of the text, whether it's before or after, depending on um, what you have stated. And then caps on or caps off, we'll turn the caps lock on or off. So I wanted to also touch base uh, on the microphone buttons um, and setting some of those up. Uh, so in order to do that, again, you click on the pill, you come and you then you select the 
device button mappings. So it brings up this dialog box here. Um, I actually have a uh, Philips uh, speech mic too. This is where the users can then set up the buttons on those speech mics um, to do some of these uh, various commands. Um, a couple of them I have here by default is the record. I also have next build here. Um, but now I want to set one up to launch the dictation inside of Novarad. Um, inside of Novarad by default, our uh, dictation um, is the D key. So you just click on the add button. And in this top part is, um, it's kind of, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's faintly flashing blue under the device button, um, indicating that's the field we're in. And you just press the button on the mic that you want to um, program. So I'm gonna do the EOL. You can see it selects EOL. Now I have an option of either recording a command <clears throat> or recording um, a command or a keystroke. So I'm gonna select keystroke and I'm gonna use the D key. And then you see in here, it will add in the D key. And I can then bring up a study here in my image viewers on my other monitor, one second. And I forgot to follow Matt's steps, I apologize. And setting up my dictation provider to be fluency. So that's what will happen if, uh, if a user doesn't set that up. It uh, brings up just our local transcription window. And I have done too many actions at once. So that's uh, that's just set up the 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 buttons on your mic, and you can add that. Uh, you can add additional buttons um, for the previous field, next field um, are usually the most common. Uh, as well as launch dictation. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is some of the formatting options. And these provide additional options related to the display and the rendering of the dictation. Um, and these can be changed at any time by the end user. So again, clicking on your pill and then going into the formatting, it'll bring up this window. Here you can look at the uh, the various items that can be adjusted. Um, so like the number starting the sentence, you can click on your drop down. You can either change it to spell out three or um, provide the numeral three. It does this for some of your numbers in mid sentence, some of your ranges. So, you, know, you can see here it's either three dash four or three two four. Um, you know the users can adjust those on the fly whenever they need. Now, Dragon, or not Dragon, um, Fluency Direct is very good at, at, at learning um, and learning on the fly uh, as the users are dictating. But occasionally, it's not going to recognize certain words. Um, a lot of these are going to be um, some nouns, some places, and uh, people, people's names. And so you can add, users can add those in. Um, in a couple of ways. The, uh, the first way is on the fly. So if, if someone is dictating something like, Dr. Fisher saw this patient um, at the Lakeside Clinic on Tuesday. Dr. Fisher saw this patient at the Lakeside Clinic on Tuesday, period. 
So we're looking at this, and, that, and that's actually the incorrect spelling of Dr. Fisher's name. So I can use some of the commands, uh, select Fisher, correct that. Again, by using that correct that, it, it brings up my correct selection. So here I can either say choose one for the correct spelling of, of Dr. Fisher, which um, has the C in it, or I can just click on it. Choose one. New line. Dr. Fisher will again schedule this patient at the Lakeside Clinic next Wednesday. Select Fisher. Correct that. New line. Dr. Fisher. Wonder why it is. I will have to double check on this one. Um, I, I do apologize. I had to uh, redo my machine this morning, uh, but this was correcting correctly um, as it should and as the user should experience. Um, it might be because I have not gone through uh, setting my profile correctly like uh, Matt had indicated earlier. So the other way to change a um, or add an, an item into the dictionary is just clicking again on your pill and going to commands. Sorry, not commands dictionary. So the, the written form of this is going to be Fisher. And then I can record the pronunciation. Fisher. So it's now added in. Dr. Fisher will see this patient next Tuesday. So you can see there, it now has, is correctly adding the, the proper spelling for Dr. Fisher. So now I want to talk a little bit about um, some of managing some abbreviations. Um, there's many instances where um, medical centers or uh, facilities will have their uh, their name abbreviated. Um, and it just makes it a little bit easier to to say a short abbreviated um, item, and it will then type out a a longer, um, more precise description. Um, so to set up your abbreviations, again, click on the pill. Come down to abbreviations. Click on add. So the the original text. This is the this is what your the term you're going to say is. So we'll just do UMC. And then the replacement is going to be University Medical. Center. Dr. Fisher will see the patient at UMC next Tuesday. And I misspelled university. So you can see here, I just did the UMC, but it, it then types out University Medical Center. Um, that way it, it can just help the, um, the user get through the, the dictations much quicker um, by not having to say out multiple syllables. The one of the, the the last things I wanted to talk about, kind of inside of uh, the command center, 
is um, the sign out versus quit. Sign out will log the user out of Fluency Direct, and it will require uh, the next user to sign in with their credentials. Uh, this will leave Fluency Direct running. Um, you can see here, now it's just saying, please sign in. So Fluency Direct is running. And then I can just sign back in with my username. did not like my password. I, I apologize. So I, I could sign back in. Now, if I do quit, it's actually going to completely exit out of Fluency Direct. And then I would have to, to relaunch it. Inside the, the pill as well, there at the very bottom, um, you can find this help and resource training. If you click on the online help, it will bring you to the, the Fluency Direct um, page here. And they have um, a very, very, very extensive library on um, a user guide and some on-demand training videos. Um, so if there's a you know a quick question that a user may have, they can click on that, hit the user's guide. Maybe they have a question on dictation. They can come here. They can look at some of the dictation best practices. Um, and so this this web page is a very 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 good utility um, for the users to um, refer back to when they have just a quick question on maybe how to do something. And so we highly recommend that. Yeah, it, you know, in a, in a quick scenario where they need to get some answer really quick, they can check here. Um, if not, again, Matt said you can reach out to, to Novarad support um, and we'll be happy to grab that information for you as well. And I want to talk a little bit more about um, the way Fluency learns. The best way for Flu uh, Fluency Direct to, to learn more about your voice and your habits is to use it more often. Um, if you focus on the quality of your of your dictation, editing it within that session so that it's accurate and, and what you intended, then Fluency Direct will learn from your edits. Whether you're saying select and speaking over the highlighted words or correct and then going through the dialog box, simply editing uh, with your mouse or keyboard. Fluency Direct will uh, learn from these changes behind the scenes again. Um, the expectations of, of Fluency Direct are that you will you will edit your mistakes and speak in a consistent, natural way. Um, if you forego editing, self-editing, and leaving mistakes behind, well, it will cause Fluency Direct to learn the wrong text and continue making those mistakes in the future. Um, because Fluency Direct's learning algorithms look for pattern, it tends to learn gradually. Um, but best with consistent reinforcement. Many users feel that the, the learning happens really quickly at first, um, just because there's a lot, a lot of new information for fluency to, um, to gather as you, your users are dictating. Uh, but then it, then it looks like it slows down kind of over time because it's learned how you're dictating and how your users are, di are dictating, and it doesn't need to adjust as much um, because everything is more. Uh, fine-tuned and already uh, very well established. Um, a lot of users, you know, they still may come across some errors in their dictation. And so they'll try and speak the word more slowly or a sentence more slowly. Um, this actually can, 
can cause some additional problems with, with the learning of fluency. You want to make sure that your users are being consistent in their, um, in their dictations. And if you start speaking at a different pace, slowing down, it's, it's going to start training fluency that that's how you're going to be dictating. And so it can cause some more issues. So again, just emphasize with your users to have them speak at their normal pace and, and clearly, and then do those manual edits if a word is still not being recognized correctly, either using um, the add to dictionary or the, the select that incorrect. Um, and kind of to touch back on some of the, some additional best practices um, that Matt was talking about with like the microphone. Um, if you're using, if you set up your record button um, to be a hold to talk um, instead of a toggle, you know, make sure that the, the users are firmly holding that button down as they're speaking and not kind of lightly holding it down so that maybe the pressure of the button adjusts and the microphone cuts in and out. Um, we have seen that at a couple of places where that was the case um, and, and it did cause a lot of grief to the user until we showed them um, kind of what was going on and then it, it corrected itself very quickly after that. Those, that is everything that, uh, that I have. Matt, did you have anything additional you wanted to, to add in? Uh, no, I think that's it. I, I guess we can switch over to questions. Yeah, if you guys, if anybody in um, the class, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to put those in the chat. Um, and then see Stephanie and Jen, if you guys have anything you want to add to, um, that's awesome. But yeah, we'll give a few minutes here. We'll wait while everybody um, types in their questions to chat if you have any, and we'll answer those as those pop up. So we'll just give it a few minutes and then go from there. Um, this is Matt Wagner again. I wanted to add one more thing. We do have um, an integration for um, sites that may have fluency for imaging. Um, we do have a way to connect that into Novarad, and I'll show you that really quick while we wait for any other. All right, it does look like, let's see, Sean Bishop in the chat says, I noticed the Novarad Diction box popped up for reading. Do we get to build new and better di dictation templates within M module, or are we still building within RIS and simply using M modules as voice transcription? Uh, yeah, I guess I can show you real quick kind of what that looks like. Um, if you go into uh, the manage commands and you click on add, you'll see you can name your command whatever you want it to be. This is what you're going to say. And then you have all of these options of what that macro is going to do. And so um, I would probably recommend, especially with uh, with Fluency Direct, rather than using RIS and importing those templates, I would probably use the templates here because you can tell it, uh, you know, you, you can name it something like macro CT head without, and then you can put all of your template in here and you can you can still share those templates using your command groups with other users or export and import for other users. Um, but yeah, you, you can definitely do the templates here and that's probably where I would do it because if you wanted to have a more complicated uh, macro, you can add all these other features, whereas RIS would not allow you to do anything other than the text. Perfect. And then uh, Matt Wagner, if you can go on with what you were going to show us, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. So again, for those sites that uh, that may have fluency for imaging um, uh, and the integration with Novarad, the user would come into again settings and then options, then go over to plugins. Um, again, they would select the the fluency there, but the additional steps would be clicking on this. Plugins settings uh, brings up another window. Then you select the M modal tab. The user then can put their credentials in here so that um, they can be passed along 
uh, when you launch Novarad, it will it can launch the viewer when when it starts. So down here, you can select that option. You can also close fluency uh, when the viewer closes. Um, on report signed, you can mark the study reviewed. On report signed, you can also um, open the next work list item. So it kind of creates a uh, a workflow for for the user. Um, and then the communication here is the integration for where um, Novarad will be looking to drop that XML file to communicate with Fluency. Um, and that would all be uh, set up with your Fluency for Imaging team. All righty. Well, if nobody has any more questions, let's see here. Again, here's the email. Um, user group questions at novarad.net. Um, any questions that might come up later, uh, feel free to send those there and we will take care of that and get those responses out to you. And guys, thank you so much for attending the Fluency Direct class and you guys have a wonderful, happy Wednesday. We had one more question, Erica. Oh, perfect, yeah. Oh, and I yes. see that, okay, I see. Uh, and yes, there is the ability for the SSO would just, um, your site would have to work with um, Nova Rad and they would work with us to get that set up for you. And um, everyone, they y'all have done a great job. Thank you. Thank you all for being here.